Hi everybody. Welcome back to my craft room. My name is Whitney Lucas. I'm with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnot. And today I'm going to show you guys how I make fabric pumpkins. I've made a few of them. I placed them on the Instagram page and then on the Facebook page. And there's been a very warm response. Everyone's liked them. And so I thought I would do a tutorial on how I put them together. And you guys can see exactly just how you can construct them yourself. They're very easy. And the decoration tops are possibilities are endless. So I just want to show you guys how easy it is um, and how I taught myself or how I learned it from other people. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Um, if you're watching this playback, I appreciate it. If you're not able to make the live, uh, go ahead and still ask questions if you're watching the playback on YouTube. Also, feel free to leave uh, questions and comments in the in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm notified that I have them. Uh, so all I'm going to do is get started. I'm going to try to make sure I keep track of the, uh, the, fa the Facebook Live questions when they come in. And um, just absolutely make sure, like, if I catch you guys, that I, I don't want to miss a question or miss anything if you guys post a question or a comment. Um, today I'm going to make a large fabric pumpkin that a um, customer on the Facebook page had requested. So I have enough fabric left for what she had said she wanted. So I'm going to make a large pumpkin out of this today. And then um, I have some other pumpkins that I finished but I haven't decorated the tops of them. If there's time, um, if this doesn't run too long, I'll go ahead and decorate some of those. This one is going to be Halloween for the, um, the, the client that I am going to make this for. And then the other ones that I finished completely our Halloween. Those guys are right here and then I have some fall ones up to the corner over here that I still need to put toppers on. So. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to try and keep track of this guy up here. Let's see how that works. And then just want to make sure you guys can absolutely see everything on here because um, I need to actually pull out my sewing machine for just a small amount of time it's not going to be huge so here I have a large piece of fabric and what we're going to do with it is for the large pumpkins I usually make them about um, 10 feet or sorry, 10 feet <laughs> it's a big pumpkin 10 inches tall by 20 inches wide. So I have about 13 inches here. I don't want to cut off an inch or two and then waste fabric. So pumpkin's going to be a little bit normal than the larger ones are, but it's not going to be very much noticeable because when we're sewing on the top and the bottom, um, you can just kind of adjust for more, more um, salvage, I guess. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. I've been sewing for a while. I used to, I, mean, I took classes in high school, but terminology, I'm not by any means a professional at any at anything I guess really but so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this right at 20 inches here and then I have just enough left over that I can probably make maybe one small pumpkin out of this if this is my fabric I got last year so I have enough here to probably this is about five inches wide so I can sew here and here if I cut that in half I could probably make too many pumpkins out of this amount um, We'll see how that goes eventually. I don't really want, I want to try to save or waste, I don't want to waste any, so I try to save as much as I can. Trying to make this 10 inches wide, it, there would not be enough on either side to even make it worth it. So I'm just going to make the pumpkin about maybe an inch to a half an inch bigger. No, not uh, earth shattering by any, mo by any means. So um, for this one, since the way I turn the fabric, my fold is up here at the top, but I need the pumpkin to be widthwise around so I got to cut through the top up here and then we're going to sew on both sides um, easier way to do this would be make sure that your one of your folds or the the crease or on on the fabric is on a, the left or the right side that makes it much easier then you only have to really sew one side on the machine and you'll see exactly what I'm um, talking about when I get my machine up here so those are can I use pinking shears just because a lot of times some of these fabrics will fray a lot and for any reason I mean everything every seam we have we're going to cover so fraying wouldn't really be you know horrible 
but sometimes it's just easier to have pinking shears. So I have pretty much a zigzag cane. I don't know if you guys can see that. Pinking shears, if you're not familiar with it, pinking shears put kind of like alligator teeth looking on the ends of the fabric. And see, this is the piece of the fabric that was cut at the store when I bought it. So you can see here it's already fraying. So that's the good thing about pinking shears. Your fray won't be as bad and then you won't have as much. It's probably a lot more useful in sewing garments or anything like that. I used to have a serger and if you know anything about sewing, serging your edges make things look a lot cleaner, things don't fall apart, that type of thing. So next step here, I'm gonna flip it. You want um, right sides together because we're gonna basically be working on it as though it's inside out. So you always wanna make sure your right sides are together. So I flip that over this way and take this guy and put him right back on top of it that way. So you're looking at the inside of the fabric. And now, if your edges don't line up, see how that's a little crooked here on this side? Got a little bit of that here. It's not the end, of, it, it doesn't matter. This is not an exact science because in the end, you're gonna end up with a cute little gathered piece here. And then I put a little bit of felt on the bottom of that to cover it with a little bit of the ribbon. But um, you can have a nice little gathered piece here and you don't see the tops or the bottoms. So that's basically why none of this has to be exactly perfect. That's also the beautiful part of it is that you don't have to worry about making mistakes. Oh, as Bob Ross would say, mistakes are happy accidents, right? So now we're gonna sew. And so I gotta pull my machine up. I'm only putting the machine up here for the side seams. The top and the bottom where we're gonna gather it, that is done by hand and not, I don't use thread because it breaks way too easily. So um, I'm only sewing the sides just because I'm not a fan of hand sewing and the way I'm gonna hand sew the top is not um, professional by any means. I'm actually gonna be using yarn and a yarn needle from uh, my crocheting uh, supplies. Um, I saw a few things. I watched a couple YouTube videos on how to make fabric pumpkins and one of them they used embroidery floss and it looked pretty simple and easy but I didn't have any and I didn't feel like going to buy them so buy any supplies so I said you know I have a lot of yarn. Yarn has different thicknesses so I have some smaller yarn that I've had and I've had these yarn needles for a while for when I've made blankets and other things um, and hats and those types of things so I used what I had and it worked out really well. So what I'm doing now is this is basically the width of the pumpkin. I'm gonna sew up on the sides here. The top and the bottom we're leaving open, so I'm only gonna sew here and here. Now, I know the, the your view possibly is not very good just because I can't turn it this way because the presser foot at that point will not be on the floor. My table will get in the way. So, just gonna sew up the sides real quick. If you want to hand sew, and if you're really good at it, Go for it. I'm not a strong hand sewer. Um, the things I've done, um, the stitches have been a little bit, unless you know you're talking about the hem on a, a pair of pants, those types of things. Um, if you're just tacking a hem up, that, that hasn't been like earth shattering, those have been okay. It's just something like this. I'm going to stuff a lot of batting inside this pumpkin to make it really thick and, and puffy and, and cute. So my hand sewing might not be up to par with the amount of stress that seam is going to take. Now again, this isn't like putting 40 pounds of pressure on anything. It's going to end up being just a little bit, but I don't want to take the chance of it popping apart if anyone wants to pick it up. So I'm just going to sew up both sides. So it'll be real fast. And since we're not gathering, I'm going to go ahead and backstitch on all this. side is done now I'm going on to the other
and that's the end of the sewing machine. Both sides. And then now basically what we have here is a big circle. So now if you can see here, here's your pumpkin. And we're going to gather the top. We're going to gather the bottom and then we'll be stuffing inside the middle so everything will be uh, filled in. It's all filled in. So I'll still, I'm still working with it inside out for the bottom, um, the bottom gathering. And again, I watched a few YouTube videos on, on it just to get different people's perspective. And um, so far, what I found is um, some people have done them really quick. There's one of them that said it was a 15-minute video, and they did everything by hand. Um, and I found when I tried with actual thread. Uh, the gathering, if you're doing like, you're, you would do a really loose hand sew at the top. I found when I was gathering with the thread, the thread would break. Uh, so either I'm just not gentle enough or I was doing the, um, I was doing the, uh, the stitches too small. Um, just not sure exactly what I was doing wrong, but I kept pulling and the, just the fabric wouldn't gather correctly. So I've got yarn here. I've seen uh, one other person on YouTube was using embroidery floss, which is thicker than thread. It, I'm sure it worked perfectly fine, but I got embroidery, um, there was embroidery floss and a thicker needle. So what I did was I have um, lots of crochet supplies and I have this really big thick needle. You can see online. This is a very thick, heavy duty needle and it hurts when you poke yourself with it. Um, and crocheting I had, I have, this is a crochet needle. So it's for stitching things into blankets and stuff. I had a, I also have plastic ones, so these guys don't hurt at all. You can poke yourself all you want. I mean, it hurts a little bit, but it's not going to break the skin. These little plastic ones here, um, you can get them in a two-pack at Joann's or Michael's, you know, just for a crocheting, and you can see it has a really big, pretty big eye on the top of it to put yarn through at the top for stitching on buttons or, or other types of things or, or even to close a blanket or to, you know, it's, it's a, it's a crochet thing. So I had two of these. Now I made about four pumpkins in when you start to stitch the seams through the bottom and the top and the tip broke off. It just, it couldn't, the plastic couldn't handle that kind of tension. So I've had this metal one in here for a while, but I had purchased the plastic ones just because I've lost this thing a few times in the sofa or in the chair while I'm out working on whatever project for crochet, whether it's a blanket or a, a scarf or anything else like that, and you lose something this big in your sofa or in a chair, you don't want to find it any other way than the way you're thinking. You don't want to sit on this. You don't want to step on it. If you've got children, you don't want them to find it. I have small dogs that I desperately do not want them to poke themselves on because this guy is pretty sharp. It's not as sharp. No, it's pretty damn sharp. It's it's a sharp needle. It's also very thick. So this can withstand the amount of tension that I'm putting through the bottom of the pumpkin, and you'll see why here. But it's also got a really big opening and uh, eye in it in order to put that through. I still have threading. I have these little uh, threaders you can also get in the yarn section, Joann's and Michael's. Um, these are just a really big version of what you can use in regular sewing. If People, if you have a problem threading the top of a needle on your, your sewing machine or on a regular needle, they uh, make these little things here. Sometimes they're really small and they're metal. This one is pretty big and plastic because it's got a really big opening in it for yarn. You push that guy through the top of your needle, you thread the yarn through it, and then you pull it through, and then that's how. It's the easiest way to thread the top of a needle. So that's just two of the small things that I just repurposed from my crochet because I didn't want to go purchase some more stuff. I don't have any embroidery floss so I just went with that so I'm leaving this open as far as I'm not cutting a certain length because I don't know exactly how much I'll need and then by the time you're done when you pull this tight you're probably only using maybe about this much yarn but in order to get it threaded through I'll show you here um, you're gonna need a lot of a lot of it so I'm just taking one of the sides I'm opening it up and I'm gonna start here at the top and I'm just gonna push the needle in and almost it's almost like accordion style work it in and out of the top in and out of the very top I'm staying about maybe a half an inch away from the top so then you start to pull the yarn through 
and then just keep going in like accordion style pushing on that on that uh, that needle there and so all you're doing is making sure you're just keeping it, it it'll gather on its own you just kind of work that through um, and you can start to see the idea that we're getting here um, so again let me see if you guys get there accordion style in in and out in and out and I'm only really staying again it's all guesstimation there's nothing that's an exact science I'm just staying about a half an inch from the top here pull that some more and just keep going it works once you get a rhythm and a flow to it it'll go pretty quickly for you it doesn't uh, take very long to just get these tops in and out so the 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 more difficult part if you, if you know this it's a fairly easy project all around but the more difficult part is after you've stuffed it and you're doing the top of it to get the stuffing and then also sew through all the stuffing I will sew most of the top of this before I stuff it and then after I stuff it just finish off a couple pieces there because again we're gonna leave this connected to our yarn here and then um, that way you have you have more to work with because I've made a few of these where I cut the yarn and then I went through stitching the whole thing and then without even thinking of it I basically um, undid most of it because I pulled on it too much and because the other side wasn't uh, knotted which you could knot it I guess I, I, I just wasn't thinking it when I tried it before I did knot it and uh, pulled it all out all the stuff that I had stitched I pulled it all out so that was just one of the small little bumps in the road I came across so here I've met the other side almost looks like a little top sack so we're gonna just pull that tight um, I'm gonna try and save as much yarn so I'm gonna pull on my connected side over here and pulling it back through and I'm just gonna leave enough yarn here to tie a square knot um, those are those ones you left over right and right over left so here we go so in this instance my right sides my cut side so I'm gonna go right over left pull tight left over right Pull tight and you've got a, a square knot that's pretty that's very standard um, and I'm just gonna do one more left over right right over left tight that off cut it off and this is the inside of your pumpkin so you can leave your stitch if you want there's it's not it's not really all that earth shattering I'm gonna turn this guy right side out now so basically that's the bottom of your pumpkin there isn't really any opening you can see, but it's not um, basically a really, it's a really thick yarn, so you can actually stick the needle right through the middle of that. You're not gonna have a problem with it, and since this is a very thick, large needle, you're not gonna have a problem pulling, pushing it through. On the smaller pumpkins here, um, like this guy here, um, and also the really, my little ones that I call minis, these minis here, uh, when I was using the plastic needles, those pop through really easy and you can see them through the stuffing and you don't have a problem uh, finding it. Also, the plastic one is much more pleasant to try to find when you're pushing it through the bottom, which I'll show you when we add the veins around the outside. Um, this guy, yeah, it, it hurts sometimes. But um, that's, I guess, the nature, right? It's the nature. That's the name of the game. So... Here, I'll show you how I'm doing this. So starting over, I'm putting my threader through the eye of the needle. Then I'm sticking the yarn through the threader. The threader piece here. Pull that a little bit so you see how it's stuck on the threader? And it falls out. So I pull that here, and then what we do is you pull it through, take that off, and those threaders will save a lot of time. And sometimes a lot of sanity too, because if, you know, yarn will fray very easily, it's not fun. So now we're doing the top. It's the same, it's the same um, premise as the bottom, except for now I'm working on the inside because I want to make sure that when I finish it and I tie off, the, the, the tails are going to go inside the pumpkin. Um, if they don't, it's not a problem just because you're going to be putting 
a stem and leaves and ribbon and those things on top and you won't see it or it'll just uh, blend in with all the rest of the stuff you've put on there that it won't make a difference. Plus that's why I'm using orange, it's a complementing color. Once you stuff this thing and we put the this, the seams and the, the, the veins on the outside, everyone, you can pull it apart and see them, but when you're just looking at the pumpkin as a decorative piece itself, you don't see the yarn. So I'm just starting off here and getting the little accordion going. Just do that all the way around the top. And I also found that you really need to only do a few at a time. If you really load the needle up, um, this fabric is, it's a thinner fabric. It's just your average decorative, you know, holiday fabric. I got this at Joann's. This print I got last year, and I'm not sure if they had it this year. I went and I looked at all their new stuff, and I, I posted that picture on my um, Instagram and Facebook when I went and got it. Um, they have a few other really cute ones, but I wasn't looking for this because I already had a lot. Um, and also I had used this on a garland project I made last year too. So this is left over from last year, and this piece right here is, is all I have left of this pumpkin and owl fabric, which is extremely cute. But um, I may go back to Joann's just to look for this to see if they have it this year. I did see um, this bat, the green bats, black with green bats on it. They have that at Joann's this year. But I wasn't absolutely sure about this one. I didn't see, I wasn't actually looking for it, so I really honestly couldn't say whether or not they have it or not. Plus, depending on where you're at, anything's possible, right? They, everybody's got different supplies at different stores at different parts of the U.S. So just finishing this guy off and it's gathering at the top but what I'm going to do is with this extra sal the salvage connected to the yarn I'm going to pull it out some because we're going to stuff this and I need to have a bigger opening to get that through you don't want to struggle with it because my concern would be I don't want to break it or or I don't want to pull too much out of um, out of it so that you're not you're not having to restitch through your old holes or even just make new holes so I'm holding this piece here because this is my end piece and I'm pulling more towards the part that's still connected to the yarn. So I'm just kind of just making it a little bit bigger. So now I have a pretty big opening and we're going to stuff it now. So here's the gigantic bag of polyfill. This was pretty cheap. I got it at Joann's, but you can get this at Walmart. So I just pull it out and I kind of rip it apart and then you just keep stuffing it in. Um, I've only made a few other things before that I'd stuffed. Uh, when I was in high school, I made a, made a velveteen rabbit one year, and she turned out very cute. She has a cute little sundress. I will have to uh, have my mom look for that. I'm pretty sure I think it's at her house in the garage still. But um, that's really about my only experience with stuffing things. But then when I saw the you know a couple YouTube videos that said this was really quick and easy. I also have an extreme obsession with pumpkins. I call them my spirit vegetable. So every fall and Halloween, um, I tend to buy more pumpkins when I really don't need them. And I see Stacy's watching. That's my sister. Hi, sister. Thank you for watching. Stuffing pumpkins. And it's just easier. Pulling this apart kind of gives it, it takes up more room, makes it fluffier. I don't want, you don't want to put so much in here that the pumpkin is difficult to work with. You also don't want to put so much um, on, or too little in because then it won't be, it won't look right. It won't look right. It just will look kind of loose. You want it to still be puffy enough so that when you put the veins in, the veins will make it look really, really cute like a pumpkin. Like a natural pumpkin, even though you know this is fabric. So take your strings, and I'm going to pull on the side that's still connected to the yarn over here. So here is this guy that I cut off. I'm holding him pretty tight in my thumb here. And I'm just going to pull this more, and you can see here, you keep pushing that in. It's starting to form the part that you want. So you 
keep pulling and see is this as thick as you want it because I'm gonna you'll see that natural creases will occur in the fabric I'm not sure if you can see that there natural creases will occur and then that's how I'll guide you when you're putting the veins in to see I'm gonna put probably maybe another two handfuls in here because there's still a lot of extra loose fabric up here that I'm not exactly excited about so I'm just going to make sure again that you hold on to the piece you cut and then open it back up just a little bit pull out this fiber fill and add that in Stacy is watching and looks like she had some lunch that's nice <laughs> So watch what I'm done. Yeah, you can watch the playback. As soon as I'm done, I'll post it to Facebook. Facebook will probably render it. I don't know what they do. And then um, it'll be on there later. I'm also going to upload this to YouTube. So if you're watching it on YouTube, feel free to give me a like, a subscribe, that good stuff. Help, help grow my YouTube channel. I think one more in here. I think that's going to be good. It's a pretty, pretty good size. So let's see how far we go here. Pull this tight, pull this tight. Yeah, this is pretty good here. So what you're going to do here is this is where if you have problems tying knots that have tension in them like this guy if, if as soon as you let go here if you can see it'll open back up so you pull it tight again I'm leaving just enough open here so you can still see some of the stuffing let me push this out of the way you can still see some of the stuffing here in the middle because we're going to put a stem in there and then also I use it to tuck under and glue in the uh, pipe cleaners that I use to put the ribbon in and then also any leaves or any other cute stuff any of the little um, uh, you know little decorative pieces and picks that you buy if you want to put anything on the top of it so I leave it just open enough when you put you'll see when I'm putting these in uh, the veins into it the stuffing won't come out and then after you're gluing everything into the top of it your stems um, anything else like that nothing's gonna come out of this I also put a piece of felt on the bottom when we're finished after I sew through here just as a just as precautionary just in case something comes out uh, while we're sewing sometimes the, the the yarn will grab some of the polyfill and pull it out the bottom but we're not gonna it's not earth shattering in any means so here is where sometimes you may need some help sometimes you might just use your own uh, your own little shortcuts and stuff so I pull it tighter than I want it because you're going to lose some of that tension when you tie this knot and this is one of the more difficult knots if you ask me so I have to take the piece that's cut here and that actually needs to go over it's going to try to do basically another square knot square knots are very very strong and that's what my husband had taught me he was a boy scout his father was in the navy so I know a little bit about tying knots but not much and again, if you don't know, there's a YouTube video for that. Always. <laughs> there's always a YouTube video. So I'm going to put right side over left side. And I'm sorry you guys don't have a, a good clean shot of this, but right side over left side. So now you just have your basic piece. Now here's where you're going to use one hand here to pinch this. If you don't have anyone to come help you pinch it, um, I've got these little... This is like a little alligator clip I got years ago. This thing's really strong. It's got some pretty beefy teeth on it. Still going to lose a little bit of tension on it when you try to hold it here, which is fine. It's not the end of the world, which is why I made that smaller. And sometimes, see, it doesn't grab it the way you want to. It would come undone just a little bit. So this is part. This part's a little bit more difficult if you don't have the help. Or there's always the method of hold it with your hands and then hold the other side with your teeth, which I may do. Um, just to get it as tight as I want it to be um, and then of course I'm going to be cutting off the piece that was in my mouth so if anyone's concerned about purchasing something that was you know it's okay everything's good to go I'm going to try to not do that though so let's see if I can get this guy to hold here as tight as I want him to and if you guys have any ideas on how a better way to do this please uh, feel free to let me know um, 
see. Oh, I love the skull stuff I'm seeing is that ribbon. Yes, actually, this is bur that's burlap. I got that at Joanne's the other day. Pliers that lock. Yeah, you know, that's a good idea. You know, I have surgical scissors, believe it or not, for my craft room, and those lock in, which is a little weird, I know. I have, don't ask how I got them. <laughs> so this is actually holding right now. It didn't come undone. So I went right over left. Now this time I'm going to do left over right. And let's see how this works out. And then what you're going to do is just as if somebody was holding this for you, you're going to try to go right up underneath there. And you take that. Yes, and it worked. So anything you have that pinches. And that was a good idea by Stacy, my sister. Uh, use pliers that lock. So anything that has a locking mechanism on it, that's a good idea. I do have the little tiny surgical scissors. I don't remember if they're like in the dentist thing. I'm pretty sure I got them at the indoor swap meet. So um, those are to hold things closed. That's another good idea. Pliers that lock. So now my little alligator clip served me right. I'll put him back over here. And then I like to tie probably maybe two more just because there's more tension on the top here than there is the bottom. Um, so there's right over left left over right and right over left left over right you got a square knot and that's not going anywhere this is kind of a long tail so I'm just gonna cut them probably about right here throw that piece away and then you take these tails and just tuck them in again you're gonna be gluing and all kinds of good stuff on top here so it's not going to make one bit of difference. So here's the top, if you can see. You can sort of see in between here, if you see there, I don't know if you can see that, there's the, the yarn poking through on the top there. So this is how much I've left open, just because you're gonna use this fiber fill also as something to glue onto. So next is the, uh, time to do the, um, wow, words, <laughs> the veins for the pumpkin. This is fairly simple also. Now this one, same thing. We're going to need to make sure we keep the tension tight while we're sewing it. So you're gonna hold the bottom in. So this tail here, I don't necessarily want it to be, you're gonna hold enough of it out, right? So at least I would say, This right here says it's about 14 inches. I just pull a long amount to where you're comfortable with it because after you pull this really tight around the side, you're gonna bring this one back up and I'll show you, you're gonna use that to make it make a, make your knot at the top. So you're gonna go in with your, your needle right down in through the middle. And this is the scary part. You have to feel in here for it. And you've gotta squish it and there it is and you're going to pull it up out through the middle here like this. So here's where I was talking about, here's that tail, right? We're going to pull this all the way out. Got a little twisted, okay? So we're going to pull this out here like this. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. The piece that's still connected to the yarn after you just pull this through the top, kind of pull a little bit more than you think you need. This is all guesstimation, so I'm just guessing that I'll need this much. Because you're going to pull these so tight, it really shouldn't matter that eventually you're probably really only using maybe, maybe a foot to two feet of yarn. Depends on the size of the pumpkin. If it's a small pumpkin, you're not going to even use that much. So what I do is I'm holding this down here, I kind of wrap my fingers around the bottom to keep it tight. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna hold the pumpkin and then with this up here, you just keep feeding back through the hole in the bottom, okay? So again, I'm holding it tight with these hands, with these fingers. And then again, there's, there's my needle. This is the careful part since I'm using a metal needle. Like I said before, when I was using my plastic one that I use for crocheting, doesn't matter, it doesn't hurt. But this guy is heavy duty, I broke the other plastic one. So see, as I pull it back through, I don't know if you can tell now. Do you see, well, you can see the yarn right here. As you pull that tight, that's how you're making your pumpkin veins. And you can see how it starts to take on the cute little poofy pumpkin part. And then you don't see the yarn unless you pull open the two pieces that you made your vein from. So you're gonna do that. I'd say for most pumpkins, for the small ones, I did it four times. 
So you're not having to pull and pull and guesstimate that many times. For this guy, I'm probably going to do maybe five. So I got one down. And then I'm just gonna go by the natural creases in the fabric here. So after I stuffed it and pulled it closed, you've got natural, natural little creases in the fabric from the gathering that'll kind of give you a good idea of where to go next. And then your spacing is all random. In you know, a regular pumpkin in nature has no, is not even. It's not a butterfly, it's not identical. So just guesstimate where you next where you want to put your next one and just kind of help guide it along and then hold it. Put your needle back through the bottom. And then you can pretty much feel where it's going to come up through the middle. Pull that guy tight there. And again, I always will pull on this guy to tension the very first one up and hold it. So now you've got, if you can see, I know this fabric is kind of busy for the, the camera. You can see there, there's my second vein. So I'm just going to continue along and keep going. I think someone said something here. I'll... Surprise, cute spirit veggie. <laughs> it is. It's my spirit vegetable. I love pumpkins. And then, um, what's next here? I have to use a thimble. The thimble I found is it's kind of hard to feel where the where the needle went. I think this needle, yeah, see my needle went in way crooked, so I'm gonna kind of back it out just a little bit. Don't let go of it here on the bottom. I back it out just a little bit, and I can feel it on my thumb in here. And then pull that back up through the top. Kind of pull tight. And then again, I'm gonna pull this first one tight. Again. Hold that here and then just keep going. I got probably this one and then one more. So I think maybe this still ended up being, so you can also push down in the middle here. And again, I'm sorry, you guys can't see. I'm looking for my camera. The needle's already sticking up out through the middle. As you make more veins, you've already started to pull things down in the middle and it gets easier as you go to uh, make those next veins. Also, um, the more that you uh, get used to the tension, the easier it becomes to realize, okay, well now this is my next one I need to pull. So I'm gonna pull from the bottom here again one more time. And then I look here, this crease is here, and this crease is here. So I'm actually, I'm gonna do two more. So here's one more. Don't wanna knot that at the top. So here's one more. You'll get, to, you'll get a comfortable feeling as to how you wanna place your hands and pull on one side as opposed to pulling on another side. And again, see, this is the little bit of, of yarn I have left, but it's, it's perfect amount for where I'm going. Here's my crease, here's my crease. I'm gonna go right down the middle here I don't want to lose this off this needle, so I'm going to hold it really tight. Push that down in the middle. Okay, so I got really good guesstimation here because I only have a little bit here that I've pulled through the top, so you're pulling that extra tight. And now the piece at the bottom that we started with, I'm pulling that tight too. I don't know if you guys can tell. It's making the uh, the little the little vein seam here a little bit deeper. Bring that guy up through it's the existing vein that's already there. So off of the bottom, I'm pulling it back up through the vein that we already had in there. And I'm going to tie the two together right here, right in the middle, another square knot left over right, right over left, or right over left, left over right. All you gotta do is make sure whichever side you start with is the opposite when you're making the second round. So left over right, right over left. Or left over right, right over left. Whichever one you did first, you do the other one second. Cut the tail off, tuck it in. And again, it, for my first couple pumpkins, it took me a little bit of time to get used to it and to make sure that I got them right. And then um, once you get a good rhythm, it's, it's simple. It, it becomes very easy. Um, the first two were really mini pumpkins, so it wasn't that hard on your hands. And then as I went into the bigger pumpkins, it got a lot easier. Um, sure, you can see here that now the pumpkin itself, you've got little poofy parts of the pumpkin 
to where you can see where the veins are. And if you need to, you can always find your veins, pull them apart, look for the brightly colored yarn that you used. I used orange just in case you do want to look for the, the behind the scenes, the ins and outs of it. You can always find it pretty easy. So there's basically the pumpkin part. Now the other fun stuff now begins is the, um, the top. I have bushes in my front yard called pyracantha bushes. I really like flowers and plants and gardening and stuff like that. And I'm not a green thumb by any means. I subscribe to plant it, water it, it should live. Sometimes it's not that easy. Sometimes it is. So uh, this really big bush, I live in Las Vegas, so this really big bush uh, grows in a lot of places and it gets these red berries with little white flowers on it and the birds love them. And this bush actually has some pretty, <laughs> some pretty na nasty thorns on it, but it grows, I mean, in the summer it loves the heat, it grows really big. So what I did was I cut all the branches off of it and then I cut all the thorns off of it. And I got this nifty little stick here. It's got character to it. I like the knobs on it. I like how it we it looks weird the way they grow. I'm going to use this piece as the end for this stem on this one because I like that little curve to it. It adds to the little, you know, the Halloween vibe. Things are a little twisted, a little weird in nature. So I just used a vise. My husband, well, I was having some problems with my other one, so my husband said, why don't we get a vise? So here's my vise. Attached it to the craft table. And then I have a saw. <laughs> and I won. Let's put it that way because there were a few times I had it. I tried to Dremel. I tried a regular saw. Things weren't working out. And I got the other ones to work uh, out pretty well. But the bigger pieces for these bigger pumpkins, I just wanted it to be a nice clean cut at the top. You don't want splinters or anything. And I felt that this was really cute. And I have a lot of these. I, I made some stars for my Christmas tree last year. So, I mean, we're talking about sticks off of branches that are this big. I've got probably about five, five or six more. And the bush in the front yard, she's been doing great this summer. So if I run out, I'll just go back out and prune some more. So I figure right here is where I'm gonna put this stem. And if that doesn't look extremely cute with that little twist in the top of it, I don't know what does. So that works really good. Now the bows and the ribbons I'm putting on top, I don't wanna hide the stem too much. So you have to be careful not to overdo it, which I'm very guilty of when it comes to ribbon. I love ribbon but this little stem here is precious. So I have a glue pot, but I want this glue to be really, really hot. So I'm just gonna kinda move things around in here because you can feel the yarn where you push the yarn through to make the, 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 the stem, not the stems, to make the seams or the, the veins, excuse me, in the pumpkin earlier. So I'm just gonna kinda push things through. I'm gonna kinda move this stuffing with my fingers out to the outsides of it a little bit, kind of make it come in more in the middle. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to push him down in here like this. And if your stem ends up going to one side or the other, don't worry about it. Crooked, I mean, if you, everybody's seen the pumpkins when they come out for sale or if you go to pumpkin patches, stems are not straight or by any means. Like nothing is symmetrical in nature. Now granted, this is a pumpkin with pumpkins and owl fabric, but Again, nothing has to be completely perfect. So I'm gonna glue him in right here on this side. You can see exactly where I'm gonna push that. I'm gonna hold it for a little while. So what I do is, I got the glue gun up really, really high here. I'm just gonna load this sucker up with glue. I'm gonna let it kind of drip down the sides a little bit. And then I'm gonna push that right back down in there and just hold it. I might shoot some more glue here and here. I'm just going to hold it up to the side here. I'm going to let it kind of go a little crooked, maybe into the middle. But that's how I'm just going to leave that there like that. And then for the ribbon, I'm going to use a few of the things I'd already had. I had the request from this the client that wants this. She preferred the purple, so I'm going to use this um, Happy Halloween Burlappy ribbon. And then this purple ribbon I have also. Um, she liked this one here, so it's basically like this one but I'm gonna use the different ribbon that she requested. It's got um, Happy Halloween written on the burlap part, and it's got some witch's hat, and it says trick or treat, some really cute stuff here. I'm gonna use this purple, and then I haven't really decided which other one I'm gonna put in there yet. I'm debating, I, need, I, need, I don't wanna put another two. This is a very large bow. This is a big pumpkin though. I think I can use another two inch or two and a half inch ribbon. 
The smaller ones, you don't really want to use that big of a ribbon, which is why I have two one and a half inch ribbons and one two inch ribbon. But again, it's all preference. If you want a really big bow, that's fine. And you know, also if you don't have sticks, if you don't have the ability to get to um, your front yard or you don't have anything you can, you can rip apart or break apart, feel free to use felt. There's a way you can cut the felt into a long strip. I also saw that on YouTube. And then you literally can cut it into the, the length that you want it as long as you want it. And you can just glue and roll, glue and roll until you have a really cute um, stem. And then that's also cute as well. Or you don't have to use a stem at all. There's, um, there's also this uh, sunflower option. Now see this one, I got these at Hobby Lobby. This one right here, you'll just clip that guy right off and then you can pop that on the top of it and be done with it if you're not really into the ribbon or if you're kind of a little nervous about cutting ribbon or you don't want to have to buy all the supplies. You could also use um, a big sunflower, leaves, that type of thing. I'm going to use a leaf and some ribbon. I'm still holding this guy up here. I'm also going to use some of the ribbon to push this in the space, but that's pretty much where it's going to be. So here, hold that. So let's see what else I didn't want to miss anybody's. Love the stem. How many? I went to how many creases should be done. Creases are just completely your choice. If you want to do four or five or three or two, depends on how big the pumpkin is too. On this one, I did one, two, three, four, five. I did five creases. On this one, this guy, also a large one, two, three, four, five. I did five here also. So it seems like these large pumpkins that I'm doing, I'm doing five creases. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four on these ones. And then this guy, I did one, two, three, four. Oh, see, on this little one, I did five. So just depends on how it's looking for you as you make it. So this little guy here, um, also I used orange uh, yarn. There's five creases in that too. It depends on how many, like how, how fat and plump you want your pumpkin to look, I guess. Nice video, a bit proactive. Hi Magda, it's nice to see you. That's good. Uh, supplies, yeah, Stacy. supplies are really limited. You just need fabric. I used a sewing machine. You don't have to have a sewing machine to do the, the sides. You use a fabric sewing machine. Um, I used a yarn needle and yarn because I had it. Otherwise, you could use a regular needle and embroidery floss. Um, and then the stuffing. And then anything, all your, your little remnants you want to put on top. So you can get leaves and different things like that. For Halloween, I don't like to use green leaves. So I took some of the greenery bushes that I already had and I spray painted it back in the front yard and I'll show you that. I'm going to use those on the front. And then so for this, I'm just going to cut a couple pieces of fabric. I mean, sorry, a couple pieces of ribbon. For this here. And this is all guesstimation. This is a pretty big pumpkin. So I'm going to guess I want my first tail to be about... That's... To where the dovetail ends, those are about seven inches. So you figure if you put that here, you got a good amount. Excuse me, that's mine. You got a good amount um, of tail living off that. So it's about seven inches. And then let's see how big I do this. That's big. So that's about a five inch loop. So at five inches, sorry, it's five inches once it's closed. When it's open, it's 10, obviously. <laughs> so I pinch again at that amount here. So I've got my first measurement if if you want to know for your own measurement purposes. I twist it and then here I'm just guesstimating to make sure that that loop is about the same size as this loop. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Twist it again so that it, the front is facing while you're holding it. I feel like that loop is not big enough yet so I'm going to remake and make it a little bit bigger. That seems good. Twist it. Okay, so in order to, like, once you find that you're happy with the placement of it, I've got some 
chenille stems or pipe cleaner. I've cut them in half and I just push that around the middle and I twist it a couple times just to hold it. And then I'm going to go ahead and place it on here and see how I like see how I like the placement of the bow if I like um, how big it is if it's not big enough. Now nothing's permanent because I haven't cut this ribbon yet. So I think I'm really happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and guess that I want this here this way. So fold it in half and cut the V away from the bow. So that gives you the uh, chevron, I call it dovetail, whatever makes you happy. So there's one. Here's the purple that you like. Now, I always work with wire edge ribbon. This ribbon is not wire edged. So I didn't know it when I bought it, but it is so pretty. I got it in so many different colors. I don't know if you can, if it's picking up on the camera very well, but this uh, purple stripe in the middle is very, um, it's not iridescent, it's just really shiny. The gold helps bring some of that out, and it's just, it's just gorgeous. I have it in, I think, five or six different colors, and I wasn't paying attention when I ordered it. I got it at Paper Mart, but it is gorgeous ribbon, and um, it is a 25-yard spool. I mean, there's a lot of ribbon in here for 25 yards of it. Uh, 75 feet if you want to look at it that way 25 yards and it was 555 for the whole spool so I mean I couldn't pass it up and I ended up getting every color I wanted so this one since there's no wire in it I'm only gonna make the loops big enough so that they'll still stick up as um, as you place it in there so basically I want the tension to make this bow what it should be so I'm gonna do three loops of it and then I'm gonna cut. Now on the smaller one, I only have one loop. It's literally just, I cut a length and I pinched it in the middle and I pushed it down in there and I used the tension to make the, the bow puff up, which is what I'm gonna do on this too because there's no wire in it. But this, I couldn't pass up, it's a gorgeous ribbon. So I'm, for this one as a bigger pumpkin, I'm going to use three loops instead of one. And again, pipe cleaner right in the middle where you've been holding, where you were pinching it twist this one. This one's going on its own pipe cleaner because I need to really make sure it has a lot of tension in it to get it to stick up the way I want it to before I glue it in because everything's going to be glued in. So this is what you end up with with the pipe cleaner but then when you push it into the project it's going to do this and then from there you can move things around and get your tails where you want them and that's pretty much how I've gone how you're able to get around the fact that it's not wired. It it won't have as much play in it as wired ribbon is as wired ribbon does but it's not um, it's not the end of the road if you accidentally buy some, which is what I did. I accidentally bought so much of it, and then I realized when I opened it that it wasn't wired. But again, not, not a problem. These little pieces that I cut off after I dovetail it, I save those because I put those, like here's another one here. It's got a little bit of a skull on it. I put those on the bottom just for fun. Um, it never hurts to just save remnants and pieces of everything. You can always find a use for them at some other point. I'm going to cut this one a little bit longer um, just because I'm not sure how long of a salvage I want. I don't want. I don't know how long I want that tail to, pop, to poke out. So here's just another another idea of how I want this one to, to, to lie in here. So I'm just going to poke this one through here like this at the top. And again, I haven't glued anything in yet, but it's always a possibility. So again, I'm, I'm coming dangerously close to covering up too much of that stem. So then there's sort of an um, idea of what we're looking at. I haven't glued them in yet. I'm going to glue them in. Um, so I have one more piece of ribbon that I want to add to this guy here. But I'm not sure which one I want to use. I used a checkered one on the other guy. But I have a Harlequin one, which I think she wanted to keep this more towards the other. And then I have this one here. It's got purple. It's got some purples in it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a little bit of this one. This one's brand new. I just bought this one. This one I got from CraftOutlet.com. If anybody's wondering, they have a lot of really, a lot of really good holiday ribbons. A lot of good prices, and Craft Outlet actually does a um, a 
point program. So the more you spend, you earn points, and then you get money off of your next order, depending on how much you've spent on your previous order. Okay, so there's my dovetail starter. I'm going to keep that piece. And I'm just going to guesstimate here. So this bow, I'm going to add to it. first one I made about, how did I say? I said I made it about maybe seven inches. I'm going to make this one a little shorter. I'm going to make this tail a little shorter here. I don't usually measure anything, so if there's things that you guys want to see, um, I'm just giving you measurements from what I'm doing here, but I normally don't ever measure anything. It's just I eyeball it, and if it looks good and I like it, I leave it that way. So it's usually not really anything that um, that's an exact science. You don't need anything that's like that. And let's see if I'm just trying to check you guys' uh, questions. Um, let's see, Paige. Moving a skeleton hand. Yeah, he grabbed my stuff. 75 feet, less 15 to 20 bows. Um, it could be more than that, because sometimes I don't even use them for bows. Sometimes I just use them as tails. You don't actually have to do a bow. You can literally just cut a piece, hold it in the middle, and make, you know, cut a piece off, hold it in the middle, and make it just tails coming out. You don't always have to have the bows in the middle of it. So it, if you're not strong at making bows, you don't even have to worry that much about it, because just having... A little piece sticking out like this with this little V on it or even a, a diagonal cut that can add what you want to your project too it doesn't always have to have a bow on it and there are things that I've done where I've just stuck what they call tails I've just stuck tails into a, a wreath or a project that I felt yeah sure it needs something extra it needs some ribbon but doesn't necessarily need a bow on it so I'm happy with this guy I'm gonna go ahead and untwist this one I just did and don't be afraid to squish your work it's wired so you don't have to worry about messing anything up um, I think this is called Harlequin is this no houndstooth looks different this is Harlequin I think this is a Harlequin design houndstooth is more I actually have houndstooth right here but my tablet's sitting on top of it it's not a checkered pattern but it, it it's a little different Harlequin um, kind of gives you this diamond look. So I undid that twist tie. And I'm just going to wrap it around the middle of this one here. And again, not afraid of messing up or um, smushing what I already did because once you get the project in and you've glued it in, you may have to hold it down to glue it in to get it to stay. So there's a possibility that you're going to smush whatever you've done. So it's just kind of like a almost a guarantee that you're going to have to keep primping that bow no matter what. And here I've just twisted the base of it all together. So this is what we're looking at, but that's not done by any means. This is just to get me to where I want to go. And since this guy's sticking up kind of short, I'm going to possibly, I'm going to do this one just a little bit longer. But everything is, everything's really just eyeballing it. It's, it's what you feel looks good. And so this is what I'm working with here. I made this tail a little bit longer than that one. It's also longer than this. This one sticks up straight. I'm going to move these around just a tad bit just to see how I want to do them, how I want them to sit. So this tail will come down this way. So it's up in the middle here like this. Okay. So what I do here with these, now I'm done making some bows. I'm going to pull this one back out a little bit and twist this off. If you've got too much pipe cleaner, because I've cut one pipe cleaner in half and wrapped it around the middle of each one of these ones. If you've got too much pipe cleaner, just cut a piece off. So I've got a pair of uh, wire cutters here. Cutting just a little bit off, because I'm going to use this piece of the stem here, and that's what I'm going to use to glue and push into the top where the um, stem is. And then it's going to catch on to all the... The yarn that you've used to create the veins and it's going to catch on to the polyfill 
Same thing with this one. This was a big, bigger, beefier bow, so I'm going to leave this entire piece on here, and I'm going to glue all that on. I'm going to put glue all over that to get that to stick. I'm a creature of, uh, I guess you could say organization. So I save all of the little pieces that, you know, they wrap around and I re-tape them up because it makes it easier for storage. So, but I'll finish, I can finish that later. So let's add the bows onto this one. I'm going to try to find placement to where I can make sure that that stem is still showcased the way that I really want it to be. The crooked part of that stem is what I love so much about it. It gives it so much character. So it's really just about placing. Okay, so that looks good to me. I'm going to make sure I get that there. So I'm going to put glue all over this piece here, which I would normally have my glue pot ready to go, uh, but this time, since I'm kind of working in a smaller, tighter space, I don't want to get glue on my ribbon here, which doesn't matter. I mean, I can hold, you can literally smush it and hold it like this, dip it in the glue pot, and then push it in here. But um, I don't have it on because I didn't want uh, to have it while we were sewing. So this particular, I use it a lot for wreaths and florals, which makes it, it it's awesome. If you, if you don't have a glue pot, get one. It's great. Um, I actually got mine off of a, an affiliate link for another um, Facebook page uh, account that I watch called Nick's Seasonal Decor. He's done a lot of great things. He's very, very talented. And um, he had the glue pot. And so I said, all right, let's try it. And you get it off of Amazon. It's really great. So if you do, go to his page, take a look at it, use his link, and um, tell him I said hi, <laughs> if he knows who I am yet. So um, I'm going to put glue on this guy and then feed it under. You're going in to where this, into where your stem is, but you're going underneath the fabric. So you can still see, I don't know if I show you, sorry, this tight shot. You can still see here underneath here, like where I'm going to put my finger. You're going to push that end piece of the pipe cleaner underneath this piece of fabric and get it into the stuffing that's inside there. So you've got a lot to get past, but um, once you're finished with, that's what I'm saying, leaving this hole in the top won't, won't cause a problem as far as the stuffing coming out because you're gluing and you're, you're utilizing that in order to hold your project together with all the glue. You need that extra piece of uh, fabric and supplies in order to, to get the glue to adhere to things. So you're going to glue it to the top of the fabric, you're gluing it possibly to the bottom of the stem, and you're also gluing it inside on the um, fiber fill or the polyfill. So this right here is just going to get all glued up. And be careful guys, this glue gun, my family knows I have burnt myself badly on these glue guns many, many times. So the glue pot makes it easier. It's not as scalding hot as you would think. Um, how did I want this? I wanted this. See, yeah, yeah, watch that. I wanted it this way. So I'm going to take that guy and push him down in there like that. Now I'm just going to keep working it in. And if it's not going the way you want, I've got extra pieces from old stems. You get a piece of wire, get a, a bush, a, a stem off of a bush, uh, even a pair of scissors anything you can find to help you push that down in there because if that glue is that hot you don't want to touch it. Ends of scissors, ends of pliers, your wire cutters, anything you have and get that in there to push it down in deep where you want it to go and then pull it back out and you're good to go. And then if you find that it's still a little loose you can always put more glue in. I do that at the very end if I see where I want things want things to have just a little bit more um, secure or something else on there put a pe you know, just give it an extra couple of shots of glue anywhere. And I uh, really, really won't see the problem with it. Because at the end of this, your glue isn't going to be showing anywhere. So there's that guy there. Now this guy I'm going to put off to the side here. I've got this one here. Let's see, this piece might be a little bit too long. And if you find it's too long, at the end we're going to cut it and we'll see exactly what we want it to look like if we want it longer or shorter. But since this stuff isn't wired, this goes on its own. It has its own um, pipe cleaner. And we're going to use the tension of pushing this up together on its own. So it's, it's more of meant to be like a sloppy bow, if you could call a bow sloppy, because I think all bows are pretty. <laughs> so we're going to find this guy here. 
And I'm going to stuff it right in there like that. So first I got to test to make sure that that space is available. Just to make sure I can get that down in there like that. Yeah, I can. Okay. So time to add some glue. And then push it right down deep into that project there. So once you get it where you want it to be, I'm going to move a, little, a few things around and then just hold it for a little bit. I'm going to twist it this way. Hold that there. I'm still trying to make sure I'm not covering up too much of that stem. The stem is um, quirky and cute and I really, really like how that end piece got twisted there in the middle and that's probably my favorite part of this particular one. I always have little small things, little favorite parts of everything. Thank you, Stace. She says, this is looking so nice, sis. Wow, I guess you're really in your element as we get ready for Halloween and fall. Yeah, fall is my favorite. I mean, Christmas is my favorite holiday as well, but I find that fall and Halloween decor and those types of things, wreaths and and centerpieces, I absolutely love doing them. I have so many things for fall and Halloween. Well, actually more fall than Halloween supplies that it gets really easy to continue to purchase them when I know I don't need them. That's the part. <laughs> so this is basically the bow. This is how we have it here. Uh, when you're looking down on the piece, you can see that cute little curve of the stem. Um, so right now I have a little empty space here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a couple black leaves in there. I took regular um, greenery bush cut a piece off of it and then I took it into my backyard and I spray painted I spray painted it black but I left it to the point where you can still see a little bit if you see here at the tip you can still see a little bit of green in there so it's almost as though like this one I did and this one is just solid pretty much solid black both sides I mean I, I spray painted this thing all over so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these two off and I'm going to use both of these on this pumpkin. I'm going to incorporate the bigger one possibly down at the bottom here by the stem and then this one inside the bow. And you'll see how I do it. But the spray paint was easy. You can get spray paint very cheaply for a dollar, 98 cents, 97 cents at Walmart or they have uh, inexpensive spray paints at Lowe's, Home Depot's. You can get spray paint at Hobby Lobby. It's kind of expensive there but um, I've bought stuff there too just because um, it was on sale. But this was just an easy a 98 cent can of black spray paint that I got at Lowe's at some point. So, and it was about five seconds, take it out into the backyard. This was the whole piece. It had however many extra I have. I got one, two, three, four, five. It had five other leaves on here and I've used them all. So I literally was just holding it and spray painting it, trying not, I got spray paint all over my nails. It was great. Um, spray painting it in the backyard just to make sure I don't get anything dirty. Um, and then that's really about how it turned out. And then I stuck it in a piece of styrofoam to let it dry. And then that's basically how I've done it. And I, I was doing it as an experiment for a different project and it ended up working out perfect for this one. So that is what it is. I'm gonna still save this because if, even though it looks kind of raggedy and you're not gonna use it for a project, you can use this to stir your glue pot. You can use this for many, or even earlier, like I said, to hold something in there that's too hot or too, um, too much too small of a, a space. You can use these things for everything. So I don't throw those away. Now for this bigger one, I'm probably, I just like to set them in to see where I want to place them first. And usually where I stick most of my stuff ends up being the end piece there. So I literally just tuck those in. I tuck this guy in here just like that. So you have that there, you still see the stem. And then this guy I just picked up and I push right down here in the middle of that. So all we're going to do is put two pieces of uh, dab of glue on each one, stick them in, and then you're done with your pumpkin. I'm gonna add one more thing to the bottom after I glue these guys down. So let me just get some a good amount of glue on here and set this guy right here in the middle. Don't be afraid to move your bows, don't be afraid to push things around and get them where you want them. That's the wired bows on this side. It's not going to go anywhere. And 
And then this guy, you're going to push, pull your bow apart as much as you can because you're going to glue this leaf to the bow. You're not gluing it to the pumpkin. It needs to go to the bow. So I actually need to see how much of this stem I should cut off. Yeah, I need to cut a little bit more off of this stem. Okay, so that's how I want that to go there. So I cut more of the stem off just because that plastic piece got really long and it was going to inhibit how far down I wanted to stick it into the bow. And then also it should be pretty lightweight so that the bow itself won't be weighted down from any extra plastics or anything like that. So obviously these little artificial leaves and stems aren't very heavy. So there's the two pieces of leaf. And then you can just keep moving your bows around and messing with them and getting them kind of where they want. Now see, I think this guy's too long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut just a tiny bit off of it at the bottom. Let's see, I'm gonna turn it this way. And there, I'm much happier with that. That turned out more the way I wanted it to. mess with these loops a little bit. This is the stuff that's not wired, so it's not exactly going to move the way you want it to, but you can force it any way you choose. Twist things around, move them around. Well, thank you, Magda. <laughs> That's a good thing. Thank you. She says it. Uh, you make it look easy, but I know that mine would not look anything like yours. You're a natural. Thank you very much. That's why I, well, I mean, I like doing this. It's extremely fun. And once you get past the, there is no perfect way. It's whatever you like. It, it, it gets a lot easier. It gets a lot easier. So there's pretty much the top of the pumpkin. That's what he looks like. I'm going to put some better, better pictures online so you guys can see. I know the camera angle is kind of not that good. Last piece that I like to do, you, there's really no need to cover this up. Nothing came out while we were sewing it together, but I'm going to put a little bit piece of felt on the bottom of it. Um, I've cut some pieces out. Now, that's a pretty big piece of felt here, um, which, I mean, that's not earth shattering if you wanted to leave it that big. And then technically you could. There's nothing saying you, sh you can't. This just keeps a little bit more of the possibility that something should poke through or if someone, you know, like your kid gets a hold of it or a baby or dog, whatever, depending on if it makes it out alive, you're not going, it's not going to end the world as far as, um, you know, see, I don't want to cut that. I could use that for two smaller pumpkins, but I think I'm honestly just going to leave it that size and then maybe I'll put this purple in the middle here. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So just using remnants. What I'm doing here is I'm going to just put this guy right here in the middle like that and we're going to push it in there. So what I do is I just take my glue gun, make sure I got glue. Okay, so I just put shoot glue all over this piece here and this is actually pretty hot. I can see the steam coming off of it. It's on a higher setting and you push your piece right down in the middle there like that. I'm going to use the handles of my scissors so I don't burn myself through the felt and then just kind of push that in So I got it pretty much in the center of the hole there and then take the sides down and then just put a little shot of glue here, push that out. So you're just putting the little tiny pieces here, you're just making sure you're tacking it down and then it won't come off, won't come out. And then this, I just, I mean, these are little pieces that you would normally throw away and I think they're pretty. I don't like to throw away stuff that's just like so cute. I feel bad. <laughs> so I'm going to leave this one as a cut. I'm just going to clean that up just a little bit here. I'm going to put a little bit of fun on it. I'm, I might leave it just the way it is. Now I'm going to cut it off and make it a, a dovetail on both sides. You'll see. Just adds a lot. It just it's fun. It's fun and light, and it just adds a little bit of extra. In my opinion, I mean, not everybody likes certain things, but to me, this is cute, and it's it's a fun surprise. 
you might never know it's down there until one day you knock it over or you look at it and you go, oh, hey, look how cute that is. So it's just a little bit of a surprise. To me, it's cute. This by itself, see, you smushed a little bit. You just pull the little loops back out, push this out. Also, when you store it, you know, your bows are going to get messed up. It's, it's just very easy to put the little pieces back in there. And that's pretty much it. There's your bow, there's your pumpkin, and then there's your little surprise on the bottom. And in every single one of these pumpkins I've made, I've done that. I've just put an extra piece of the ribbon. Here's some of this ribbon that I cut off on the felt on there. Uh, some of it I cut with the pinking shears, so it has like a little tiny uh, zigzag on the bottom of it. I couldn't help it. It's just really cute, tiny stuff that people don't think of. Here's one, just a little diamond of the fabric, or um, you know, of this ribbon here that I cut off on the bottom. St small little things like that. That's just how... I guess you could say that's how I operate. <laughs> so that's it for this guy. This is how it turns out. Um, it's very easy. Um, for, for a project being from top, you know, start to finish, it's not that bad. I thought it would take a lot longer. And of course, my first couple that I did did take me a while. There were some some hiccups and some, some hit and misses. But after that, it gets really easy. And then um, it, it all becomes second nature for you. And you don't really have much to... Uh, try to work out on it. It doesn't, it doesn't really get harder. It just gets easier. So tell me what you guys think. Um, and if you like it, um, if you want to, you can share this video, um, either now or once I, I, I post it to Facebook, once this is over, I'm going to post it and then it'll be there for a repeat. You can watch it on a playback. And then also I'm going to put this on my YouTube channel too. Um, so again, if you have more questions, feel free to comment or uh, personal message the page or leave a comment um, in the YouTube comments below, uh, whichever makes you feel good. I also sell these. Um, I have an Etsy account and I take cust uh, custom orders too. So if you'd like one, um, this particular one is already spoken for. This one was requested by a person and I don't have the fabric for this to make more except for two small ones. Um, and I, Again, if it becomes really popular, I could go to Joann's and look to see if I can find more. It's not a problem. Uh, but I could always do my best to make sure I make something that you guys would absolutely love. So tell me what you think. If you make one yourself, please send me pictures. I love to see what everybody makes. Um, I'm a huge advocate of we learn from each other in the crafting world. That's why um, we should always help each other and support each other. So if there's anything else that you guys like to see, um, just message my page. Let me know. Send me a post. And I'll do another Facebook Live. I have some more stuff planned for uh, fall and uh, Christmas coming up. Uh, i got a couple of wreaths and some other ideas. But if there's anything you guys want to see, uh, just let me know. And I will make sure I can find a way to get that done. So if that's it today, I'm just going to check to see if you guys had any other questions before I sign off. And then um, make sure here. Um, oh, and Stacy, let me show you. This is, this is houndstooth. You see the difference here? This is a hound's tooth, and this is a harlequin. So it's kind of like the the diamond the diamond pattern. Um, here's a different harlequin. Hopefully, I don't create an avalanche here. Here's a classic harlequin, harlequin, just black and white. And then that this guy earlier is what you're asking about. This is hound's tooth. So it's a little bit different, much different. This one's kind of not so diamondy, but this is hound's tooth. And then there's just plaid. This is this one right here is just a black and white picnic plaid right there. So there's a couple different colors. That's why you can say anything like that is perfect for Halloween and fall. You can you can put crazy colors you would have never thought would look good together. Just try it. And I've seen that on many different Facebook pages and many different YouTube pages where it ends up working out and it looks great. So that's that's the difference between the two. And then um, just let me look real quick one more. I really appreciate that you guys joined me today. It's really fun to, to talk with people while I'm uh, crafting. And love it. Will you be selling Magda? I am selling them, but this one, but this particular one was a custom order. So this one's already spoken for, but I can make more and I have a lot of fabrics. So we can always get together uh, or, you know, private message or anything like that. And I can make something that you would absolutely love. This particular guy is the largest one I've made. It's $23. Um, they start down at the minis, uh, really tiny guys here. These are six bucks. So anything, you know, Really, really small. Here's a couple I, I haven't finished. Now this is some of the fall fabric. I still have to add my bows and stuff to the top of this one. So here's some fall fabric. Here's a medium one. This guy would be about 12 bucks. I'm gonna add 
uh, some berries and some other picks and things like that I've got added to those guys. Those ones are definitely for sale. Um, would you suggest to only see the ribbons and stem? Is it okay to let the top fabric ruffle show? Um, the fabric underneath is not ruffled. It's kind of gathered a little bit, and you do see the gathers through the top of it. It's not that it's completely hidden, but if it's too close to the opening, you're going to see that polyfill. And the polyfill is what you really kind of want to use to glue to because it's already kind of held in with the veins that we sewed in. So the polyfill isn't going to pop out and you need to glue into it. It might look unfinished unless you leave a lot more fabric to kind of make it look maybe like the top of a sack. That could look really pretty. Um, that's a good idea. But I didn't, leave, I didn't leave enough fabric at the top to make that, that sort of look. Because you could make it look like maybe the fabric's tied around the stem and then you don't even need to add a bow. Or you can add a really thin satin bow that's just little or some twine or raffia for more of a natural look. And then that would look really cute too. So that is a really good idea, Stacy. Not, not bad at all. Um, love it. Sell it. And gasp the mini. I'm in love with it. Okay, perfect. Thanks, guys. I appreciate everything. Um, I'm going to sign off now. So again, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you guys. And uh, until next time, have a great time and stay safe. Bye-bye.